doing no more than the 20th of the global warming. In, in other words, all human activity accounts for one six hundredth of the percentage which comes to roughly... Insignificant. Statistically insignificant. We are not... Nothing we do can affect temperature. The, 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 my, my real point, the real purpose of my question yeah. was, was for your comments on this... Uh, um, one world government protocol. Oh, well, one world government has been a German, it's been a German dream for years, because the, the, I mean, it goes back to the League of Nations. Remember, Jean Monnet, the, the key people of the League of Nations were German spies, Jean Monnet and Salter. Both worked, Arthur Salter, both worked for German intelligence. Simple as that. So, so do, do you think it's a threat? Oh, of course it's a threat, but it's, 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 it's not a serious threat, because it's simply never going to happen. Oh, I'd love to have a word on that. <laughs> if we sit back and do nothing, Within five years, this country will be governed by militant Muslims yes. and a Sharia yes. law. Yes. Yes. And they will put such a fear of God into the Germans that they will come out with their hands up. With their hands up. <laughs> yeah. And if they don't, they would actually be better off under yeah. the Germans than under the Muslims. Yeah, the problem, the problem is that Idris, well, the problem is Idris makes his point in a very humorous way. Of course, he usually does. The problem with that is that the Germans always work closely with the Muslims. That goes way back to the Salt, the Kaiser Sultan Alliance uh, of the 1880s and 1890s. I knew you had an answer. I, I have an answer. Yes, I have an, I won't say I have an answer for everything, but I have an answer for most things. Says he conceded it. The EU, though, the gentleman asked. I'd like uh, you to comment on it. Me? No, no, no. Well, uh, I don't uh, agree, but, uh, question. Ah, the, re the relevance of the EU. The EU is and always was a front for German intelligence. It's as simple as that. All the key players in the EU, whether it was Jean Monnet, who was tracked by the FBI in World War II, arranging for precious metals to go into Germany, things like vanadium and molybdenum, which the Germans were short of. Jean Monnet worked with the Jerrys in World War II and afterwards. No. All the key players. Yes, he did. Jean Monnet was a Jerry. the Americans. No, 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 no. He worked in America for the Germans. Here, the chairman and I have a, have a mild disagreement. Uh, I've spoken, uh, the FBI tracked Monet down to repeated conversations with the Abwehr's head of station in Mexico City. The Abwehr's largest overseas station then and still is, I think, at the DVD's uh, overseas station is Mexico City. The Germans bankrolled the 1917 Mexican Revolution. Germany controls Mexico as a client state. Um, German intelligence had huge, huge station at Mexico City in the war. Jean Monnet reported to Admiral Canaris through Admiral Canaris' head of station at Mexico City. He was tracked down there by the FBI. And the FBI opened their file on Monet way, way, in fact, in 1940, I think. If I may say so, you've dwelt quite a long time on rather minor subjects, <laughs> but two major subjects you've skipped aside. One is Malcolm's, the threat of the Muslim and the fanatics of oh, right, yes. this world. Mm -hmm. And number two is the world government, which is being sought throughout this world very seriously yep. and with great impetus. Yeah. And yep. you brush it aside as though it were nothing. Uh, well, to deal with those two points, world government is very, 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 very dangerous. But my view is that, that in, it's now been so thoroughly exposed as, a, as, as linked to German intelligence and the DVD that, that it is not going to gain any traction at all. Well, uh, because well, it, yeah, it's, it's been spotted. It, it's, it's a German wet dream. It isn't going to happen. No, no, no. The, the, world, the world still is, despite 60, well, despite uh, nearly 100 years of German attempts to, m to override the sovereignty of nation states and to create supranational institutions, uh, there is still no world government as such, and the world still is composed, even in the United Nations, of sovereign member states. And even after Lisbon, we as the, in the UK as a sovereign state will have the right to withdraw. Just a moment. So I think it's a, very dangerous, it's a very dangerous idea, but it's a very dangerous idea, but we mustn't get into the habit of mind that somehow there is a world government when there isn't. You still haven't answered Malcolm's point. On, on world government or Islam? No, not on world government. His point was about the Muslims. Oh, the Islam, yes. The yeah, Islam, Islam, the fanatics. Islam, the Yeah, exactly. Um, it, Islamic terrorist organizations can all be traced back to the one master Islamic terrorist organization which is the Muslim Brotherhood. Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Hezbollah,
there are links going back from all of them, even the Shiite groups, all the way back to the Muslim Brotherhood, which was controlled by Abdul Canaris because Banner was one of his assets. So was the Grand Mufti, who was in bed with Hitler. Uh, Canaris' people arranged for the Grand Mufti to exit out of Berlin in April 1945. Yasser Arafat and Mahmoud Ahbas are protégés of the Grand Mufti. Now, so Islamic terrorism cannot be divorced from the German DVD. That is the controlling agency for Al-Qaeda, for Hezbollah, for Hamas, for PFLPGC, all of these Muslim terror groups. Now, in addition, a lot of the Islamic movement to the West has been uh, controlled by, uh, uh, funneled by um, uh, uh, people trafficking, human trafficking organizations. Human trafficking is inextricably linked to drug trafficking. That is because the intelligence agency ultimately controlling most of the drug trafficking and human trafficking is, again, the DVD, and you will find that it tends to be assets close to the Germans who are pushing Islamic uh, immigration into whether it's the United States or the UK. Now, yes, it's a threat. Uh, yes, it has to be counted with. I don't, for one moment, um, uh, I'm not, uh, for one moment, downplaying the nature of the threat, but it's been identified. We know where it's coming from, and we know how to stop it. It's not that difficult. It just requires political will. I wish, I wish we knew how to stop Oh, we do. We just grasp political will. But he hasn't finished the question of world government. It's calming the situation and uh, 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 reducing the threat, frankly, forever of world government. I think both the EU, the African Union, and the United Nations should all be broken up. One of the key things to breaking up the UN is to emphasize the right of nation states to go to war. That's why it's absolutely important to counter, as I do, and take every occasion that I can to do it, to challenge the theory that only the UN can authorize hostilities, which is another way of saying nation states uh, cannot defend themselves, uh, which is absolute and utter nonsense. That's why John Bol my friend John Bolton did wonderful work um, at the UN as American ambassador. He is one of a number of key Americans who understand the threat to American sovereignty posed by the UN, uh, this point is understood in Washington. People at Heritage Foundation, for example, doing wonderful work on it. Uh, we understand the threat. The UN is fast losing power and influence behind the scenes. And I'm confident the EU will be broken up as well. I am an optimist, Harry. I don't apologize for that. Just as you were in, in World War II. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the enemy is there. Yes, the, threat we the threats we face are substantial, just as they were in the 1940s. But we, will, we are confronting them. We will confront them. And we will defeat them. Mr. Chairman. It is a bit warm, yes. <laughs> Just a minute. Yes, please. Too much hot air from the speaker, I'm afraid. <laughs> Michael, you said, I've got the next question. This is a very practical question because every three or four months I get, a, a, I get an email from the Ministry of Defence. Oh. I don't know why they send it to me, but they keep sending it to me. I've had it for two or three years. What this email says is that on such and such a date, uh, such and such coordinates in either West of Shetland Islands or of Iceland or something like that, the Royal Navy is going to conduct jamming tests. And what are they jamming? GPS. Yes. Why would they do that? Well, the problem with GPS is the bad guys have access to it as well. So jamming GPS is not, not a, a, such a bad idea. Uh, the, the GP, it, it's very dangerous to be GPS dependent. The Americans can switch it off anyway. Uh, if we're in a war, let us say Germany starts a war in 2012, the Americans are not in, uh, America is neutral, they might deprive the Allies of access to GPS. Uh, very, very important that your smart weapons are not GPS dependent and can be uh, controlled, gyroscopically controlled, in other words, have inertial platforms. Uh, that's a very, very important point. Uh, but the ability to jam GPS is also very, very helpful because the bad guys, if, if the GPS system is on, everybody can use it because the codes are so generally available. So, can't the, the British Well, we can't, if America is neutral, we can't necessarily depend on the Americans being helpful, particularly if the Obama administration is in power when the war starts, if, if it starts. If it starts. Any more questions? Yes. Um, coming back to one world government, no. I read in the paper a few days ago that uh, Hay,
with Tory Bunn Comfort. Uh, 